Hello everyone. Today we are going to start the new chapter of genetics that is principle of inheritance and variation. In this chapter the first topic which we are going to discuss that is your monohybrid cross. So what is the monohybrid cross? It is the cross involving the study of inheritance of one character. As you all know that Mendel has given already the seven traits or the seven characters there and the height of the plant is one of them. So this cross in which we will study only the one character or one trait that cross is known as the monohybrid cross. So the height of the plant which is the first character Mendel has explained. This height of plant can be expressed in two different forms. So the gene which is responsible for the height of the plant that gene can express itself in two different forms and these different forms of that particular gene is known as alleles. So whenever any genes that express itself in two different forms that two different forms will known as the alleles. Now what are the two different forms? The one form is known as the dominant and the second form is known as recessive. Dominant alleles is that form of the trait which can be expressed maximum time and this dominant alleles can be expressed in two different forms and what are their two different forms? That may be homozygous and may be in heterozygous and the symbol which we will use to represent this homozygous condition that is capital T and T. These are known as the pair of alleles and heterozygous alleles are always represented through one capital letter and another one would be smaller one. So one thing should be clear that the height of the plants that can be expressed in two different forms, the one of the form which is a dominant which express itself maximum time that can be written in two forms. The one is the homozygous. Homozygous means the pair of alleles are of the same type. As you all see here that is capital T and capital T. Next one is the heterozygous. Heterozygous means the one should be the capital and the second letter should be the smaller one. But if you see here the one capital letter and the one small letter. So always the capital letter is going to express itself because the, we are talking about the dominant allele. Now the next form is recessive form and this recessive form can be written as a homozygous. Homozygous means it can represent it only through a small alphabet that is small t and small t. So dominant may be homozygous that both the alleles should be the same and the heterozygous may be one is capital and the second one is the smaller one is there. But in recessive we can re represent this recessive alleles only through the homozygous conditions that means small t and small t is there. Now we are going to show the cross between these two different forms there for a trait which is known as the height of the plant there. So first of all we will write here the parent plant This parent plant, the one is the dominant form and the second one is the recessive. So dominant means plant may be the taller one and in the recessive the plant will be dwarf. So these are the two forms of the plant for the trait which is known as the height of the plant. Or in a simple language we can say that the height of plant can be either expressed in tall form or maybe in the dwarf form. If it is a taller then we can say it is a dominant form and if it is a dwarf then we can say it is a recessive form. Now if tall we can represent through a homozygous condition that is capital T and capital T and dwarf we have to represent it through the small letter that is small t and small t is here. Always remember that whenever you are showing the dominant trait for any plant or any uh, character so this dominant form should be in the capital form and the dwarf form which you are showing for the recessive that should be the smaller form is here and the letter should be same if you are taking here the t then for the dwarf also you have to take the smaller t is there 
now after this the parents will make the gametes now these are the pair of alleles so they will separate from each other when during the gamete formation so gametes we represent it in two different circles here and here also the dwarf plants they will make the gametes here so these pair of alleles they will get separate from each other and again we are going to represent the gamete in a circle so there are the two gametes the one allele is this one and the second one is this one here now after the gamete formation the next step will be the fertilization so now the gametes of the tall plants are going to fertilized with the gametes of the dwarf plant so we can just write it here this capital t is going to fuse with this one so what is what will be the combination capital t and small t so if you see here the pair of alleles they get separated from each other during the gamete formation and during the fertilization these gametes they will reunite and they will resemble or they will assemble over here in the f1 generation now this capital t they can fertilize any of the these t letter but still we will get the same combination that is capital t and small t is there this is known as the f1 generation after the fertilization which we will get here that is known as the f1 generation and if you see the combination here so they are in which form these are in the heterozygous form so always remember that the f1 generation will always have the heterozygous combination there now afterward what will be the next step is here this f1 generation will show the selfing selfing means the self pollination so we will write here capital t and small t crossed with capital t and small t now these parents they will again make the gametes over here so what is the rule that the pair of alleles they will get separate during the gamete formation so they, we are going to get here the two gamete one is capital t second one is a small t here also one is capital t and the second one is a small t let's consider these are the gametes of the male plant and these are the gametes of the female now again the next step is here that these gametes male and females they are going to fertilize with the each other so next step is fertilization again we can write over here this is fertilization now to show the fertilization we can just make a punnett square now first of all we have to write the gamete so i am going to write the male gamete over here this is capital t and this is small t let's say these are male gametes and here i am going to write the female gametes that is your capital t and small t so these are the female gametes now we will show the fertilization capital t will fertilize with this one so it will we capital t and t now this one is going to fertilize with this gamete so the combination will be capital t and small t again this one is going to fertilize with this so we are going to write capital t and small t and now the this, this female gamete will fertilized with the another male gamete that is your small t and small t is there so these are the combination which we will get after the fertilization or you can say this one is going to represent your f2 generation now after this we have to write the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio is there so let's write the first one is there that is phenotypic ratio phenotypic ratio means if we have to find out that out of these four combination how many of them will represent the tall plants and how many of them will be the dwarf plants so that is represented through a phenotypic ratio so now if you just see this one as we have already discussed the capital t and capital t that is the dominant form and what was the dominant form it was representing the tallness of the plant so the first of all we will write here the tall and the second we are going to get here that is the 
dwarf plant so we have to find out the ratio that how many of them are the tall and how many of them are the dwarf so this one is the tall plant and if you see this one is the heterozygous condition one is capital letter second one is small again the capital is going to express itself so it is for the dominant here also one capital and one small again capital letter is going to express itself and capital letter is for the dominant so this one is also tall this is tall and this one third one is also tall so we are getting out of four the three plants are there which are dominant and the last one which are in the homozygous recessive form and recessive was for the dwarf so we are getting here only the one dwarf plant so phenotypic ratio if you just we just see only the phenotypic character of the plant so out of the four plant three representing the tall and the one will be the dwarf now next one is the genotypic ratio genotypic ratio means we have to look for the gene combinations now what are the gene combination for the tall if you see the one is in the homozygous condition so we can write it as one now other two tall plants are in the heterozygous conditions so that is two and the last for the dwarf is only one condition that is one so for the genotypic ratio one is homozygous these two are also dominant but they are in the heterozygous condition so these are two here and the last one is only for the dwarf so if you just see these phenotypic and genotypic ratio you will find here that the total sum of these phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio that will be always equal now you can see two tall one tall that is three and the one ratio one is there so this is the phenotypic ratio and genotypic ratio for the mono hybrid cross in which we have done the cross for a single trait that is the height of the plant which was showing the two alleles that is for the dominant and the recessive form there so thank you so much